If you've been following SpaceX's latest Mars prototype rocket, SN9, you may have very well gotten frustrated seeing scrub after scrub after scrub. Now, Starship is a prototype rocket, but launch scrubs are a dime a dozen within the rocket industry. Given that rocket explosions are super expensive and dangerous, it's no wonder why launch postponements are so common. Space organizations only want to launch under the best circumstances possible. Long term though, in order to successfully establish rapid point-to-point -point travel and a gateway to Mars, launch reliability is essential. So, will rockets ever become that reliable? Well, to answer this, let's take a look at why rockets get scrubbed in the first place, starting with of course, weather. Weather is by far the most common reason rocket launches get delayed, and this caution was really sparked by the Challenger disaster. The Challenger disaster is thought to have occurred due to cold weather conditions, which led to a buildup of ice on the rocket's O-rings. As a result, NASA does not allow any rocket launches to take place today if the temperature is below 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Aside from warm temperatures, NASA and the FAA have a plethora of lightning-related restrictions. Rocket launchers have to be extremely careful about lightning, as rockets can trigger lightning at lower electrical fields as they pass through clouds. NASA claims that a rocket getting struck by lightning can cause short-circuiting of key electronic systems, like the navigation system and the self-destruct system. If the self-destruct system were to fail, the rocket could crash into a populated area after getting struck by lightning. But wait a minute, don't airplanes get struck by lightning all the time and come out flawless? If airplanes can handle it, shouldn't a top-of-the-line rocket be able to handle a lightning strike? Well, the answer is yes. Rockets can handle lightning strikes, and it has even occurred in the past. Way back in 1969, Apollo 12 would be struck by lightning twice on the way up. The lightning strikes would generate a flash of fear as neither the astronauts or mission control knew exactly what happened. All they saw were a flurry of different warnings. Fortunately, though the lightning strikes caused a bunch of alerts to go off, no major systems were really harmed, and the mission would be completed successfully. 18 years later though, an Atlas Centaur rocket wouldn't be as lucky. In 1987, an Atlas Centaur rocket would also be hit by lightning, and this would cause the loss of the rocket and the payload. It's a good thing that there was no crew on board. Anyways, this incident would lead to the creation of the Lightning Advisory Panel. Today, these guys monitor cloud thickness, reflectivity, and temperatures to predict the chance of a lightning strike and determine if a rocket launch is safe. As you can see, rockets are designed to withstand lightning strikes. However, lightning has caused a disaster in the past. So, the consensus has become better safe than sorry. Moving on, we have rain, snow, and hail. Again, planes generally don't have issues when it comes to these forces. Here's the thing though, planes and rockets move in different directions. The majority of a plane's velocity is in the X direction, while the majority of a rocket's velocity is in the Y direction. This does decrease throughout the flight, as rockets don't go straight up into the air, but their angle of ascent is no doubt much steeper than a regular airplane. Moreover, rockets would be traveling at thousands of miles per hour when they pass through a hypothetical rain or snowstorm. Meanwhile, airplanes are only traveling at hundreds of miles per hour. As you would guess, colliding into millions of water droplets or snow pellets at supersonic speeds is not the best of ideas. The real threat though is not actually in the ascent phase. The main concern is that large snow pellets or hail may damage the heat shield, and this would cause serious complications during re-entry as we saw with Columbia. Anyways, moving on to the last major weather concern on Earth, we have wind. For a rocket launch to potentially take place, winds from the northeast can be no faster than 21 miles per hour, and winds from other directions can be no faster than 39 miles per hour. You see, rockets may have several or even dozens of engines, but they all point in one direction, downwards. As a result, the engines have little flexibility in actually changing the trajectory of the launch. Generally, they can gimbal a little bit, which allows for minor corrections in the flight path. But this can't account for any major deviations, despite the strength of the engines. On the topic of weather, we also have to be careful of space weather. Considering that rockets travel out of the Earth's atmosphere, space organizations not only have to be careful of weather conditions on the Earth, 
also space weather. The main obstacle when it comes to inclement space weather is space radiation. Sometimes, an abnormally high amount of higher energy protons will gather around Earth's atmosphere. This can be caused by solar flares and other violent solar activity. And, though it seems like just protons, this high density of protons can lead to serious radiation concerns. Excess radiation can also cause the heat shield to degrade faster than expected, which may jeopardize re-entry. So, that's the main weather concerns within the Earth and outside the Earth. More substantial weather conditions like hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods will also cause scrubs. But that's a no-brainer. The Russians have actually worked through many of the more minor weather conditions, such as cold weather. The thing is, Russian weather is not nearly as nice as weather in Florida or Boca Chica, Texas. As a result, handling inclement weather has been one of their primary goals from the very beginning. After all, you can't call off a nuclear war just because it's under 45 degrees Fahrenheit. With that being said, weather is not too difficult of a hurdle to overcome. But then, why are SpaceX rockets still being scrubbed all the time? Well, the answer is cost. Either you can design a super robust rocket capable of handling a variety of weather challenges that's expensive to launch, or you can design a much cheaper rocket that's more sensitive to weather conditions. Considering that SpaceX is straight up welding together stainless steel rings for their upcoming Starship rocket, they have clearly favored the second option. At this point in time, the cost of launching rockets has proven to be a much more serious issue when compared with developing a rocket that can handle more weather conditions. As a result, SpaceX as well as most space agencies have placed their focus primarily on reducing cost. However, once this goal has been achieved, it shouldn't be that technically challenging to make the rockets more robust, though it may prove to be a financial challenge. It should be noted that weather isn't the only reason that rocket launches are scrubbed though. Another major hurdle responsible for dozens of last-minute scrubs is mechanical difficulties. As rocket technology has advanced, so has the complexity of its various systems. You know, self-landing boosters didn't just happen by themselves. Concurrently, space organizations have also become much more knowledgeable about the various minor errors that can lead to massive catastrophes through years of trial and error. For instance, in 2015, a Falcon 9 rocket would disintegrate shortly after liftoff due to a failed steel strut. Similarly, in 2016, a Falcon 9 would explode on the test stand while being fueled up due to an adverse reaction between oxygen and the carbon fiber composites within the fuel tank. Each time a disaster takes place, the given organization and other space organizations all add dozens of new sensors and systems in order to prevent the same error from occurring in the future. Thus, as we continue to move forward, more and more sensors and systems have to give the green light before a launch can take place. Considering the raw number of sensors, it's not surprising that one of them will give a false or real alert here and there, causing delays to the launch. This is also a very easy issue to fix long term. As rocket technology continues to become more stable, and space organizations slowly get better at discerning between false alarms and real threats, we should see fewer and fewer delays due to mechanical difficulties. And that brings us into the final reason that rocket launches are scrubbed, which is a danger to people down below. Sometimes, rocket launches aren't scrubbed due to inclement weather or mechanical issues. Rather, they're delayed because of random people on the surface of the Earth. For instance, one time, a NASA ISS resupply mission was scrubbed because of a random passenger sailboat that came within 40 miles of the launch site. The problem was that if the rocket exploded in the sky, Fragments of the rocket may fall onto the sailboats and harm the civilians. As you know though, planes cross above our heads all the time. So, this issue is also just more of a precaution as opposed to a serious obstacle. At the end of the day, rocket launches are scrubbed all the time. But, fortunately, these issues aren't too terribly difficult to fix. The three main reasons launches are scrubbed are inclement weather, mechanical difficulties, and potential harm to civilians. The main detriment in overcoming these obstacles is simply a lack of focus in this area right now. This isn't a bad thing though. It simply makes more sense to focus on making rockets fully reusable and significantly cheaper before giving them more flexible launch capabilities. Once Starship proves the viability of cheap, fully reusable rocketry, it won't take long for SpaceX and other space organizations to adapt their rockets to withstand more weather conditions and reduce technical difficulties. Do you guys agree? Comment that down below. Also, 
drop a like if you guys are excited for Starship to finally make space travel a much more affordable endeavor. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hori, and I'll see you guys on the next one.